All right. So now let's go over judgment checklist. And I'm going to share with you an example how to fill out default without an agreement. So first of all, we have a judgment checklist. Judgment checklist is the form FL-182. We fill it out as a cover page. And then we will go over 115, 165, 141, 170, 180, 190. And then you'll attach, you will send it out to the court with two stamped envelopes of sufficient size with sufficient postage for return of the judgment. So basically this form is gonna be returned to you stamped with the court's uh, signature stamp and that will state the date upon which the court decided you're single. Now, this is a successful package that went through a default without an agreement in Alameda County, and it would apply to any county in, uh, in the Bay Area. I would double check local rules in your county, but typically that's what would be used in California for default. So we start with FL-115. The reason why we didn't have FL-115, remember, we already served the other side. We filed it with the court. But sometimes you would decide if you want to file everything at once, then FL-115, you would wait to file with this package. And there is a separate video how to fill out FL-115. So assuming you got FL-115 done. Moving on. So FL-165. We have the, the chapter the same way that you fill all other forms. Now you have a case number. And just pay attention where I check the boxes. All these um, forms are available for your review. You can compare them. I'm just going to quickly explain them to you. So this is what we say to the clerk. Please enter the default of the respondent who failed to respond to the petition. So we serve the petition package to the other side and they haven't responded for 30 days and we serve that in person or they sent FL-117. We filed it all with the court, FL-115, 117. And now we tell the clerk, okay, now we want this to be a default. Number two, a completed income and expense declaration is not attached. Remember when we don't have children involved, which this is all about, we don't have to attach FL-150. And then since this is an uncontested case, we check off CDE. There is no issues of child support, spousal support, attorney's fees. There is no, you know, we, we don't request any property um, or any money, property cost, and no division of community property. Now, if there are division of, it, of community property, then you would say a completed property declaration is attached, then you check off this box, FL160, and make sure that your FL100, your petition, has the same form attached that you are attaching here. It has to be a mirror principle. Of course, easy peasy signature uh, declaration. You say a copy of this request has been sent to respondent. Just make sure you send it. Um, I'm not sure what happened here. Let's just do one page at a time. I don't like these kind of pages. So we signed it. Okay, next form. So we have FL 170, 180, 190, 170. Same thing. And then here we say all information in the petition is true and correct because it's a mirror. The petition is going to be, the default is going to be a mirror of petition. The default was out in agreement. There are no assets in debt to be disposed by the court. If they are assets to be disposed, then we check off B. And again, the same thing applies that I just mentioned in the other form. And then declaration of disclosure here, the form FL-170, although it has been revised on January 17, 2020, um, there is a mistake in this form, which is confusing because if you can see, it says this matter. So declaration of disclosure, basically it says, that I'm the petitioner and I have filed proof of service of preliminary declaration of disclosure with the court. If you really look at the form FL-140, then it says right here, do not file declaration of disclosure with the court. So it cannot be 140, but it's 141, which 
which is part of PDD videos. So when you watch the PDD videos, I explain how to fill out the FL 150, 142, 140, and 141. And the only form you need to file is 141. to prove that you served the other side, your financial disclosure. Then spousal support, I asked the court to reserve jurisdiction. I would say, if it's uncontested, you decide what you wanna do. I would say I would check off A, I knowingly give up forever any right to receive spousal support. But if you don't, if you want to leave the door open for the court to award you spousal support, then you say in B, I asked the court to reserve jurisdiction towards spousal support in the future to me, to petitioner, and do not check off this box to respondent. And then if you're if your name, if you want to restore your name, you check off 12 and make sure 180 has your accurate name. Number 90, 19 doesn't apply to you, but in cases where the other spouse is completely out of state, has no relationship to the state, you can still be single without dividing all the assets um, because the court has no minimum contact to the other spouse. So that's, that's that. Actually, you can watch on YouTube my video about jurisdiction, personal jurisdiction. Just if you type in, in YouTube jurisdiction, I explain in, in very in, in detail uh, what it means. So this video, th this course and this video is all about uncontested, no children, both in California, no jurisdictional problems. Or if there is a jurisdictional problem, then only divorce without dividing all assets. All right, so 190. So again, we fill out all of this with check off to solution. And we sign off, the court signs off here. We put my address here. You know, I pause because technically it could be dissolution status only because in that case, the court didn't have jurisdiction. So <laughs> it's either this or this, both, both would be correct. 180, this is the form that should come with, ta-da, you know, stamp and congratulations. This is your judgment. You know, this is, this is the proof that you are divorced. Well, here you have it. You have the whole um, chapter, case number, the solution, and then the date when you're single. It says here October 24th. Remember, it's six months and one day from the time you serve the other side. And then you just check off boxes. Default, a respondent was served on that date when you serve the petition package. The court... Um, restores me to single on that date. You can put any date, six months and one day after you serve the spouse, but here the case was ongoing. And the petitioner former name is restore, restored to X. Um, and G, jurisdiction is reserved over all other issues and all present order remain in effect except as provided below. So this is where, you know, when they terminated marital status, but all other issues were reserved. And you can do that, but if you if you want something else, then you can just say this is E judgment on reserved issues or or judgment judgment dissolution is entered, marital limits is terminated and restored. Okay, so. <laughs> Yeah, typically we would check off this one. I mean, it depends on your case. Uh, this judgment will, so some of you might wonder, what does that mean, D? This judgment will be entered nunc pro tunc as of date. So there are cases where people are separated for a very long time, let's say 10 years. And the clerk, instead of entering the judgment after 10 years. So we ask for the date six months and one day when the petition was served or a later date, because for example, if wife was pregnant during all of this time period, then the father would be the husband, although not the father, would be presumed to be a father. And that's where we want to, you know, like here, for example, it's a year later after the date of service. Here we would be using a date, um, 
six months in one day for the purpose that I just mentioned. And then the court will sign it here. So this is the end of the judgment. Seems simple, but you, yeah, I hope that was, um, that was simple enough for you to understand. So these are all the forms you would be attaching to the FL-182. Fill it out. And if you have any assets, make sure you have FL-160. If you don't have any assets, just use this as a template.